Hi, I'm Howard Berger. Uh, I, uh, I'm here on the set of Orville, season two, and we're coming to the end of our season, which is sad, but it's been a long, long run, about eight months so far. And this is the prosthetics trailer. And what we do is we make tons of aliens and creatures and everything that inha inhabits um, Seth MacFarlane's universe of, of Orville. So, and this is one of our characters, one of our lead characters that you may recognize if you watched the show last season. His name is Bordas, played by um, Peter Macon, who's a great actor. And uh, these are foam rubber makeups that we, we do on Peter every day. Garrett Immel, who's, who's his makeup artist, um, spends about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes every day that Peter works, puts on this cowl piece, face, chin, blends it all together. Uh, it's it's, uh, it's a, a big event, <laughs> and uh, every single day that we do the makeup, we have to have a new set of appliances. So we have molds at my studio at K&B, and they run them in foam every day, and uh, we've probably gone through about 70 sets of appliances, and that's because once it's applied and then we take it off, the removal process destroys the foam rubber, so we throw it in the garbage, we tear it up and throw it in the garbage. So, but... Um, I, uh, I had met Seth MacFarlane. I did a film with him called Ted 2, and I was makeup department head. So aside from just doing makeup effects, I also am a department head. I'll do straight makeups and beauty makeups, and I work a lot with another great makeup artist uh, named Tammy Lane, um, and she's actually department heading this series this season, and, and I'm just doing the prosthetic stuff. But I um, met Seth uh, on Ted 2, and, and uh, that was fun, and then he called when this show came up. But... You know, it's, it, I'm, I feel lucky because I get to do something I grew up loving. So I, I never want to say it's work. It's kind of just, um, it's, it's, it's a great career, you know. And, and I'm very lucky to take a hobby that, that I uh, wanted to do when I was a little kid. About eight years old, I decided I wanted to, to be a makeup artist because I saw Planet of the Apes with my dad. And, and I figured somebody made all those characters. And I wanted to learn as much as I could. And be, this is way before internet and and all this other stuff and I really just had to look through a magazine called Famous Monsters and I saw photos of like people like Rick Baker and Dick Smith and Stan Winston and Jack Pierce doing all these cool makeups and and uh, I kind of just started to teach myself and and I had the advantage of growing up here in LA which was great so I could actually stock all my idols like Rick Baker and Stan Winston when I was a little kid and and I just learned um, I taught myself how to sculpt and paint and draw and uh, when I got out of high school because I continued to do makeup all through high school I went and I applied for a job at Stan Winston Studios and Stan did Jurassic Park and The Predator and um, uh, the Terminator movies on top of hundreds of other films and won tons of Academy Awards and Emmys and Stan hired me right there. So I was in high school one day and then the next day I was working for Stan Winston on a movie called Aliens, which is the sequel to Alien. And I stayed there for X amount of years working on other films and went to work for Rick Baker on Harry and the Hendersons. And then at a certain point, uh, myself and my two best friends, Greg Nicotero and Robert Kurtzman, we decided to open up our own company called K&B Effects. And that was 30 years ago. And we just had a teeny little shop. It was like a little bowling alley size shop. And we did what we could out of it. And uh, through the years, we grew and grew and grew and grew and started off doing horror movies, like working on the Freddy Krueger movies and the Nightmare on Elm, or Nightmare on Elm Street films and uh, Friday the 13th. Uh, then our big break came when we got to work on Dances with Wolves with Kevin um, Costner making mechanical buffalo. And, uh, and we said we knew how to do it, but we didn't. We lied and we figured it out. And that's really what it is. It's like when you're doing this, you're a makeup artist, you're a sculptor, you're a painter, you're an inventor, and you're always trying to figure out what the best way is to create what you need. And every day, there's tons of problems. So you also have to be a great problem solver. So that's something that we, we excel in. So the guys that usually are here, I have like, there's 10 makeup stations here, and usually we have 10 brilliant makeup artists here. We're all kind of in that world. And, um, and the funny thing is we all kind of grew up the same way, but just all over the, all over the United States. And we all grew up loving monsters, loving movies, and, and decided uh, at a certain point, this is what we're going to do. And, and it's really an obsession. I mean, I'm 54 years old, and I have monster posters hanging in my office. And uh, I get excited about wearing a new monster T-shirt. And, uh, um, <laughs> yeah, it's just it's fun. You know, I love it. I love being a monster kid. And that's, I think, a big thing, too. You know, it's like, you know, obviously, I'm, I'm very professional when I'm working. And, and you want to be as professional as you can when you're on set. And, but you also want to have a really fun time. And that's always my big priority is having a good time. And I don't really like to do anything that's not fun. So if it's not fun, I don't want to, I'd kind of avoid it. So, 
Uh, and this show has been really, really fun, and, and it's been great cast and great um, uh, a great crew. Uh, the scripts are super fun, and uh, you know it's given us all a great opportunity to um, be part of Seth MacFarlane's universe, which is really special. And it's not where you are just hired to make a bunch of stuff. We designed it, we created it, so it's really being a, a part of the team, the creative team, and I think that's what's important in our business and as a makeup artist or a hairstylist, if you're watching this, that be part of that team. Don't just sit on the sidelines. Don't sit on your chair and look at your phone or update your Facebook page. Like really, really be involved and be connected because you want the production um, to uh, look at you as, as a very viable part of the team. And they, they're going to look to you to answer their questions and problem solve things. And as a makeup artist, I always say we can do any job. And we are the first people um, that deal with the actors in the morning, and then we deal with them at the end of the night. And even though they'll be being directed by a director and acting with other actors, we have more to do with the actors than anybody else does. And you have to keep that in mind, how important you are to them, and keeping the atmosphere of a uh, makeup environment, makeup and hair trailer, or wherever you're working, very professional, and, but also fun. And that you uh, are always considerate of the client that's in your chair, and uh, that you take care of them and you never compromise them. And, uh, and you know, do all these things and you'll have great success. Like I said, I've been at this for 36 years, um, since I was 18 years old when I got my first professional paycheck of $300 a week. And, uh, and uh, yeah, now it's here, you know, it's uh, two Oscar nominations, one win, a bunch of Emmys, a bunch of other things. And, but I still wake up every morning like super excited that I get to come to work and do makeups like this. And, and I'm very thankful for it and grateful for it. And, uh, um, and I work with great people. So I, there's really not much more I can really ask for. So just stay on top of it. Be smart. Keep your ears open. Keep your eyes open. Pay attention. And just always be professional and try to always raise the bar. And um, it's, it's the thing that will get you to success.